she spoke to her then boyfriend who suggested that she in a sense package the baby who was now dead and put it out in the garbage and that's exactly what she did a minnesota mother charged with murder after she's accused of drowning her own baby boy in the bathtub and instead of getting help she allegedly has sex with her boyfriend in a nearby room the case began to unfold on March 6 when Minneapolis police officers were called to a local children's hospital for a report of a missing child. That's when officers encountered 20-year-old Esperanza Harding, who claimed her baby died at the hospital on March 1st. But investigators quickly determined that was a lie. The hospital reportedly had no record of her baby being admitted or dying at the hospital, and at the time, neither did the medical examiner's office. According to the criminal complaint, Esperanza came clean and admitted to doing the unthinkable. Police say she admitted to drowning her baby in a bathtub, wrapping up his body, putting his remains in a backpack, and throwing it away in a dumpster. Nothing ceases to shock me, um, and I was a homicide prosecutor for a very long time. Uh, and then you hear something like this happen, um, and and it's it's heartbreaking. It's horrible. It's just incredibly tragic. I spoke with long crime legal analyst Julie Rendelman, who explained one detail stood out to her that could show how calculating Esperanza was after the crime. I think we oh, when when we deal with crimes as we deal with all the time. Um, we start to get immune almost when we hear the graphic nature and then a case like this comes along. And I think both of us expressed before we even came on to talk about it, how horrifying it was, how, you know, me who has children of my own can't fathom the idea of doing anything to harm uh, a child. Um, and, you know, especially when you think about the idea adoption was an option. Um, she had the 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 ability um, to take that child and remove it from her life without ending that child's life. And she she chose uh, instead to do it in the most gruesome of ways. I think one of the things that stuck out in my head is how this case begins in terms of how the police learn about her. Because remember, she goes to the hospital knowing she's killed her child. She goes to that hospital claiming that her child died at that hospital days before due to natural causes and she was looking for the child. Um, and it wasn't until then that law enforcement started to say, wait, there's no child that was brought here. Something is afoot. And not only does it help the prosecution's case in terms of intent, um, but it also just shows how incredibly calculating she was in terms of the decision decisions she made both before and after this child is killed in order to try to get away with it. So what would cause this young mother to allegedly kill her baby then toss his body away like trash? The criminal complaint goes on to reveal more gruesome and shocking details. According to police, Esperanza allegedly stated she was dating a man named Edwin Trudeau who did not like her child and he wanted her to give the baby up for adoption. Esperanza allegedly told police Edwin wanted her to prove that he was her top priority. She allegedly told police on February 28th she was alone in her hotel room taking a bath when her son, who was in another room, began to cry. Police noted in the criminal complaint Esperanza admitted she was upset because she couldn't enjoy her bath. And what would happen next is nothing short of horrendous. Investigators say she then put her baby inside the full bathtub and drowned him. Esperanza then told police she took a photo of her son floating face down in a full tub and said she picked him up out of the water after he stopped moving. When you read the complaint and, and read the, the completely horrific nature, not just of taking the life of, of a, a baby by drowning them, but then taking a photo, not of the baby outside of the water, but literally submerged. You have to start to think of what the mental health or mental state was of that woman. Was she sending it to her boyfriend in a sense because she was proud? and wanted to let him know, I did what we both want me to do? Was she sending it to let him know, this is really what's happening, get over here? Um, and so only she, in a sense, can answer why she would do something besides the horrific nature of killing that child, but then thinking that it was okay to take a picture and send it out. I'll tell you one thing, though, that helps establish, because remember, the baby's not found. That helps establish for the prosecution that she is the person responsible for the death of this child. Esperanza allegedly told police she began to text Edwin during the incident. Police were later able to recover the text messages between the two. 
Around 4.45 that afternoon, Esperanza texted, quote, he's doing too much right now. I can't effing sleep. I'm trying, though. I'm about to do something bad. Please answer me. He's not going to be here much longer. According to Edwin's criminal complaint, he responded, okay, that's okay. She then sent a follow-up message saying, quote, I can't. He's going to die. I'm done. If you took the time to fill a bath that I can't use, he can use it. I'm sorry. Two minutes after that message, Esperanza messaged Edwin her baby was dead and that she was sorry. And Edwin responded, don't be. During the text exchange, Esperanza reportedly said she was trying CPR, but Edwin responded telling her to stop. Police say she sent more texts referring to herself as a monster for what she had done and then asked Edwin how to get away with it. Edwin sent texts including, it's okay, I'm a help, and later texting, you're making things harder, stop. We are a team. We do this. Once Edwin came to the hotel, Esperanza allegedly told police he tried to give the baby CPR, but that was unsuccessful. Instead of calling 911, the two had sex in the other room while Esperanza's baby lay dead on the bathroom floor. According to Esperanza's criminal complaint, she said that she had packed her own baby boy up in a backpack, then threw his body into a hotel parking lot dumpster. Police say Edwin told Esperanza to keep her mouth shut, and according to his criminal complaint, he allegedly told her, if you go down, I go down, no matter what, and it's always going to be us, Bonnie and Clyde. You know, I think that there were a blend of things going on. I think on the one hand, um, this is a young woman who wanted to please her new boyfriend, and if her boyfriend didn't want a child around, then she didn't want a child around. I think there's another aspect to it. There seems to be her own motive for not wanting that child around, almost that the child was a burden to her, not just to her boyfriend. Once the boyfriend learns that the child is dead, he's not remorseful. He's not telling her, oh, let's save the child. He's basically figuring out ways to dispose of the child, ways for them to stay together and cover up the death of that child. So he's certainly not remorseful, nor does she seem to be overly remorseful in regards to what she has done to her child. Police say Esperanza's son's body has yet to be found. Both Esperanza and Edwin were subsequently arrested and booked into jail. Esperanza faces charges including second-degree murder for the death of her baby. Meanwhile, Edwin is charged with murder and aiding an offender after the fact. And here's what else we know about Esperanza Harding. Her Facebook page is flooded with mentions and photos of her son. Her introduction includes her son's birthday and the day he died. On February 1st, she posted this update, writing, quote, 2024, it's only me and my baby until the end of time. But hours before the text messages were sent alleging Esperanza killed her son, she wrote on Facebook, quote, happy for what I have in my life. I will always be blessed with the ones I have in my life. And a couple days after the young baby died, this photo collage of her son was placed as the cover photo to her page. We see all the time people that are eventually arrested and convicted for um, heinous murders who prior to them at least being arrested post tributes to the person that they we eventually learn they've killed. So that's not quite unusual. So is it possible postpartum could have factored in? Rendleman says it's unclear. We don't know whether postpartum played a role in this case. I think one of the things that the defense is going to want to know is not just what her state of mind was then, but what her state of mind had been throughout the process of when she was pregnant and then when she gave birth. Remember, the child was about seven months old, so it would be interesting to see if there was any type of depression that showed itself prior to the death of the child. With that said, even if you accept that there was postpartum depression to some degree, the prosecution is going to hone in on the other motives, the motive of her not wanting that child around because she wanted to be with her boyfriend and prove to him that he was number one, and two, that she just felt that the child got in the way of her life. And those things are going to be contradictory uh, to the postpartum defense claim. So is this horrendous and gruesome case the work of a calculated killer or a young mother possibly at her wit's end who does the unthinkable? Rindelman says that remains unclear, but time will soon tell. I think this goes back to the issue of whether or not she was suffering from postpartum depression and if there's any elements of that that impacted her decision making. I mean, people can do horrific things and regret them afterwards. Sometimes we act in a crime of passion. Certainly we don't expect someone to behave to the lengths of what she did. But if um, some type of depression played a role, then perhaps she was remorseful in the end for what she had done. Um, I think that's gonna be something that potentially we will learn about in the future. Again, we go back to, you know, is this a person that feels incredible guilt 
um, and she's you know wants kind of to put out there her incredible guilt that she feels uh, for the absolutely horrific crime she committed is she doing this for show because she knows that she's facing a potential years and years in jail and she's hoping to in a sense get over the way she tried to get over when she went to the hospital i, I don't know the answer and again I, I i'm not sure if we'll ever know the answer perhaps we will learn more as the case goes on um, that at least gives us some insight into who she really is jail records reveal both esperanza and edwin are still behind bars edwin is being held on a half a million dollar bond meanwhile esperanza is being held on a more than one million dollar bond both are scheduled to appear in court on april 3rd reporting for law and crime i'm elizabeth milner